the days of summer leisure are over. My first big show is coming up. I've got to build $4,000 worth of inventory. We're going to open three kilns today. Uh, maybe the um, Pottery Apprentice will join us. And most traumatizing, getting ready for this show, I need to get a thing to swipe cards. And I've never even owned a phone before, so just figuring out how this thing works is a major traumatizing experience. I did make it through the store and purchase it with some help. Okay, let's see what was in these three kilns today. Okay, and just when we need our glazes to all work out, sometimes there's a little bit of trouble. So, but fortunately I've been putting away some of the best pieces over the years. Um, the, uh, my Celadon-like glaze is working always great. Um, counting on these guys to get me uh, some attention at the booth. But um, they are traditional banks that what comes goes in there can come out there. It doesn't necessarily fit though out through there. So we'll see how that backwards marketing strategy works. And just when I don't need it, a special order for a dozen garlic grater plates. Well, I do need it, but I need to get the stuff for the show made, too. And, let's see, the only nice thing about this is that, okay, when I turn it on, there's my friend Ralph looking out at me. Um, the uh, one glaze, constant success, is the Celadon. I hope it sells well. I've been selling little bits of it, and... I've been putting the drawings on, and um, every shelf seems to hold a big pie, two either soap or oil plates, and then there's a little bit of extra room. So I'm glad I made the ceramic tile. They're, you know, helping make the firing more efficient. And the oil, um, you'll have to go back to my video, glug, 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 from the summer leisure to see me make the um, oil pourers. They do get a metal stopper in them yet. The sea mist, um, I need to do more of this because it's one glaze I can count on and by putting some texture into the thrown forms, you know, I can get away with it just using one glaze. So that and the celadon. The one I really like since the start combination is to use either the snow on brick or the medium cork on the bottom. Um, either with a texture or with slip and then the sea mist over the top. Hey Julian, so here you are, the Pottery Apprentice. It's been a while since you've been here. You can help me with a kiln opening today. Mm -hmm. um, I told you I have been, wow, there we go, batter bowls. Um, you can put those up there. Um, I think I told you I've been trying to build up inventory to do a big show. Um, you haven't been here to make any pots this year. How come? What, what's oh, what's been up with you this year? Um, I've had work. Volleyball. You've been working at Target? Yeah. Okay, you've been putting a lot of hours in there. What are you saving up all your money for? My trip to school trip to Italy. Okay, school trip to Italy. So you want to go to Rome. Why? Why do you want to go? Oh, no. Oh, I don't believe it. Just when I need to build inventory, I've got, look at that, these glazes got pinholes in it. Um, I don't know, it kind of looks like you did on, like, it looks cool. Oh, well, no, that's a flaw. That's not good. Um, just when I, I you know, I, I might have taken this, uh, this firing up a little bit too fast. I keep a schedule of how I do it, but I didn't follow the schedule, so I'm going to have to get back to that. Oh, look at these. These are, you grate garlic and you put the oil on there for dipping. Um, and somebody ordered a, a number of those, so I need to get them done. So you've been putting in a lot of hours at Target all summer. Yeah. And are you still working there now that school started? Yeah, just last still a little bit less. So why is it you want to go to Rome? Um, well, I'm Italian, so that's home, and, like, we're going to see a lot of art and churches and stuff. Yeah, okay. Well, so you're going to have a camera. You're going to have to take pictures of, uh, if you see any ceramics, especially. Especially mm -hmm. if you see ceramics. You know what? If you see any ceramics, take pictures and do a video for me. 
Yeah, I'm gonna try. Uh, we can we can put it right here on uh, on the Pottery Apprentice on Potter's Journal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I people noticed when you were here in the past. Oh, these. Okay, so these are soap plates, and these are little individual olive oil dipping plates. Yeah. They're the same kind of plate, but some I put holes in, and then some I put. You've seen my rooster yeah. before. So this is a good trip for you. I mean, you're Italian. They've got art there. Hopefully, you'll take enough um, either stills or videos to put a, a video um, together. That hopefully you'll see some ceramics. That apparently, oh, wow. Let's see what's going on here. Um, oh, great. You know, it was this one glaze that did it. That I'm going to have to either refire these or something. We're going to need another board. Okay, we're running out of room out there. Um, maybe two on the kiln behind you, there'll be some room. Okay, oh, great. Oh. So, so you've been working hard to make some money. Yeah. I've been making a lot of pots to make some money. Okay, it's not all of them. It's just a handful with the pinholes, so it's not... And, you know, this is the same glaze. This one's okay. So I probably had the firing almost perfect, but um, I need to maybe slow the end of it again. Oh, do you know what these are? I yeah, have I little... I have little... These are olive oil pouring. Uh -huh. um, so I made olive oil dipping plates, and the only reason you're here is because we're celebrating fall birthdays. So you know what? We're going to have to test these out today and see how they work. Okay. okay if you're going to be Italian, you have oil. to. We need some olive oil. Cheese. We've got the plates. Yeah. Peppers. Okay. So we will give those a good test, and um, you got to promise to take some videos when okay. you're in Italy, especially if you see ceramics. But any art you see. Oh, our uh, teachers come with us. So yeah, okay. okay. You know, just, um, and sometimes, when not on all of them, but some of them, when you're looking at it, just maybe give a few thoughts or say where you're at or or say, this is Michelangelo. Yeah. <laughs> or, okay, here's some contemporary stuff, too. <laughs> okay, because apparently you can't um, turn around without seeing art there. So the studio is completely full. I'll just bring these shelves bottom and work up to the top out here and get a look at them. Um, I uh, had my sea mist too thin. It was a new batch, so I did a second dip on this one, and it came out um, like it never did before, and probably won't again. These are also um, the ones that I use the template on the bottom to get a little more nicer um, feature on the uh, the the holes in the bottom of the colanders compared to just uh, doing them by eye. And my sea mist. Um, okay, and okay, the Albany with the sea mist over top of it. Um, looks like one of these did split. So that's something I guess I need to be careful of on these bigger bowls. The um, Celadon just working out always consistent for me. I may have a little bit too much of it um, at this sale, but at least it's something I've been able to rely on no matter what. Um, and yeah, mixing up a new batch of the sea mist, I got the thickness just right finally to where it breaks on all the little grooves that I carve in there. So hopefully I can do the same thing now on some bigger um, chip and dip plates. And here's something that happens for me. When you check the thickness of the bottom, I compact it and close it up, but it seems to open up in the firing. Does that happen for anybody else? Um, yeah, the ceramic towels, these guys were fun. What's in the kiln again? Building inventory for this big show. Um, I pulled out the little pigs. Now we've got to get some medium. That's part of my plan to have things in three sizes. So, you know, they see one as being too expensive. They can shop up or down. Oh, and you know, this may take, um, um, I could have wiped the white off of his eyes a while to get used to. I was used to my Albany coming out clear and glossy, so when it 
doesn't when it comes out with the specs that sometimes breaks a little bit. I've got to get used to that. Um, let's see how it did on the jugs. Um, okay, yeah, it did break a bit more to the clear. Um, and these guys, yeah. So, every kiln load, um, not exactly what I expected. I just can't believe the variety <laughs> and the variation from one load to the next on an electric firing, kiln firing. Uh, but these guys, you know, I've been... Oh, um, there's one that I put some glass in the eye. And, okay, it didn't drip, but he is a near tears. <laughs> and, okay, my um, Celadon-like glaze, this is the one that I have been able to rely on. Um, I, uh, it may be the only thing that I've got for this show, because I had some trouble with some others bubbling. Okay, and on this one, I tried the double handles on this um, vase-like jug. But um, doing, you know, a hundred jugs, they're part of a special series that I'm waiting till they're all finished, so I had to make some more. Okay, and, you know, mixing up a new glaze, I really should have uh, used the hydrometer. Um, so I double dipped this one when it was too thin, and the, uh, yeah, the, and here it's maybe a little too thick, but um, I'm finding out just because things aren't to my taste, other people often seem to like them. And trying to get the most in this kiln, I just use these little uh, um, extender things to get a little more height. But, um, you know, here we go again with the Celadon. Uh, this one has been reliable for me. I have sold this. I'd like to have, um, you know, more variation, but that's the one that's working for me, so, um, and these tile are nice when I need something to finish filling a shelf, um, and the, uh, let's see, the sea mist, another one that always works, but on its own, it's a little bit boring. Um, I could have put some texture in those plates. Well, but, um... I think about it. And once again, the little stilts to give me just a little more height, a little more clearance, and be able to get them everything in. Um, I, I reset this kiln. The um, pig's ears were just up over the top, so I had to reset it. All right. Um, you know, this one I forgot to put the line in there, and I actually like that. So, and yes, the adorable factor, the little tart size. So we will have a lot of the Celadon. I'm holding back on the other till I figure out why my um, snow on brick and um, medium cork were bubbling. I think I took the firing a little too fast at the end that one time. I've got, um, for this big show I'm preparing for, things are slowly working out, I've got the clothes, I've got the tent, um, next is being able to take a credit card, and I've never owned a mobile phone before, so just using and getting that has been a bit traumatizing. Here's some of the stuff you did in school last year, are you going to be doing ceramics again this year? What, what was that? A turtle. A turtle. <laughs> and that was stained clay? Truly don't. Um, it was like the white clay and then right. it, we had we changed the thing so like we did like an underglaze. Okay. But before it like fizzled off. Yeah. I don't like yeah. that kind of clay. Oh, okay. You don't like the specs clay? No, I hate it. Okay. I, I, this piece I think was one of the nice ones that uh, where you carved through it. And you know, these were commercial glazes. You did some nice things with it. I do it. not remember making that. Okay, well, it looks like. Look, what? Will, will you be taking ceramics again this year in school? Yes. Okay, so you'll have to remember what you did before and try to do something good again mm -hmm. this year. 
Um, I hope uh, maybe I can get into your class and see Miss Harrington and demonstrate for you. Looks like the spiders have dug. The now this one, it looks like you um, layered one glaze on top of another. Yeah, we did like a dip glaze. Okay. And I think I'd like platinum or something like that. I yeah. Well, I do a lot of this. I do wavy bowls. And you did that texture thing around the top of it. And you did that on the other two bowls there, too. I like that, that wavy that you have your bowls have a foot and the body of the bowl and then you finish it off by doing something with the top with the rim of it too um, you know there are three parts to it and you really really showed them off you know since you did a few pieces last year these are the ones I entered in the fair for you that one was in the Finley fair and these were your production pieces that you made to sell this one made it to the Hookston fair so I hope you do something in, in school this year, too. And what's your teacher's name again? Mrs. H. Mrs. Okay, maybe Mrs. H. Mrs. Harrington? Mm hmm Okay. Well, maybe I can get in and demonstrate this year. Yeah. And you better start thinking of what you're going to do. So you do, uh, yeah, top what you did last year. You know, move it along. Try to do, uh, build on what you're, you did in the I last... Like. Two Greek sausages, one with the orange peel and one with the leek and fennel. This is from the meat market in Tarpon Springs, that Greek fishing village in Florida. Must have been good, there was no time even for a video. The Hispanic chorizo, the uh, pork souvlaki, the vegetables, it was a Greek fest. Oh, was that good? But, uh, there's nobody here even Greek.